This next video will show you how to create schedules in Revit. Schedules are very powerful. They are lists of items that have been placed in the model, but they can also be formatted to show various things like currency and you can add calculated parameters to take the total length of wall times the cost per lineal foot and, and get totals and at the bottom of the schedule you can have a grand total so they are very powerful and we're going to quickly look at how to create a door schedule and a room finish schedule. First for the room finish schedule we have to have a feature called rooms in the project. So we're going to click on this room tool and as we move our cursor around in the model we can and click we can actually fill a room with a room object. We're going to want to do that on both levels. We won't do that in our mechanical shaft and we'll notice here that there's um, a little bit of a problem where it wants to place a room that would cover that would go over the floor opening. So before we click there We'll go back to the room tool and click its drop down option and see that there's a room separation line feature. So we can quickly draw a line here that corresponds to the edge of the floor. And now when we select the room tool, it sees that room separation line as the same way it sees a wall or some other room bounding element. It is possible to select one or more walls and, and tell Revit that that should not be considered room bounding. So you can see in the properties here I can uncheck room bounding and the room which we can select by finding the X here extends into that mechanical shaft. So to select a room I need to find the little X that appears and click on one of those lines and then I can see the room if I select one of these room tags, I can switch it out with a room tag with area option. Let's say I decided I wanted all the tags in the building to have that same tag. I could click one that I want to change, but before changing it, I could right click and go to select all instances in entire project. Now in the lower right and over here in the properties palette, I can see there's six items selected and some of those aren't even in this view. I'm going to change them to room tag with area. So now if the size of a room changes, we can see the square footage changes. And because I drew two separate walls here, it created a little problem and now these, these two rooms would actually overlap each other. So that's why this one says redundant. So in this case, I'm just going to cancel that. So once we have rooms placed, we can create a schedule of those placed rooms. So we go to the View tab and the Schedules drop down. We're going to select Schedule slash Quantities. And the type of schedule that we want to create, what elements in the Revit model do we want to schedule? We're going to pick Rooms. We can change this name later if we want, but we'll just go ahead and say Room finish schedule. So you could have multiple room finish schedules and they could be um, schedules that are just for the design team use only. They don't actually have to go on the sheet. You can pick which phase you want this uh, schedule to be looking at. We'll click OK. And then we'll pick some simple things like room name and number. You could also uh, add things like what level that room is on, what the base finish is, what the ceiling finish, and, and so on and forth, so forth. If there's things here that you want that aren't listed, like there's only one wall finish, maybe, maybe you want uh, north, east, south, west, you could click add parameter. So we'll go ahead and just simply click OK at this point. So, so far we've clicked the schedule tool, we've told it we want it based on walls, and then we've picked a few parameters to show in the schedule. We can actually adjust the size of these. Right now they're all called room. So if we go to level one and 
change this to office in this big room to lobby and we'll notice in our project browser now there's an item available under schedules room finish schedule so we can see that the two names have now changed we can also change things in the schedule itself so maybe we want the lobby to be room 100 and the office that we know is on the first floor here to be room 101 so now when we go back to the level 1 we see that the room names have changed We'll go back to the schedule and look at a few additional things we can do you notice the rooms are not sorting by number and maybe we want the room number first and then the room name well when we're in the schedule we can select one of these edit buttons they really all open the same dialog box they just default to a different tab if we want the room number first we select it here and select move up and then we go to the sorting and grouping so we want to sort by room number and then select OK so now we've quickly changed the order that the uh, columns appear in and how things are sorted just a few other little variations we can look at quickly um, we could tell it to actually group by level and we want a header and a blank space and then sort by room number so now all the level one rooms are grouped together and all the level two rooms are grouped together and so I actually had to add the level column to be able to group by level if you want to um, sort or group by something it has to be added over here on the fields tab on the right but we can actually on the formatting tab select level and make that a hidden field so the column will not appear so we don't have to see that redundant information so in a similar fashion we can create a door schedule so we go Let's click modify and then we'll go to the view tab select schedules in this case we're going to create a door schedule and we want the mark which is going to be the door number and then we could add things like the fire rating, frame type, and so on and so forth. Down here we can also change it to from room or to room. Maybe we want to know what room number that door swings into. This gets to be a little bit of a problem when the door is swinging out of the building and there's no room on the outside of the building. But just quickly then we can see a schedule of all the doors in the project. Another option uh, I forgot to add would be the uh, width and height of the door can be added. And again those can be all shuffled around in, in different orders. So creating a door schedule and a room schedule are very straightforward. They automatically are listing all the doors and rooms in the project as additional doors are added this list grows as doors are deleted this list can shrink if you're not sure where a door is you can pick that row and then select highlight and model and it'll actually switch you to a view that shows that item so you can zoom out and see it we'll go ahead and quickly add a door just a random one here we see it's door 8 if we select in the row for door 8 and select delete we can actually delete doors from the door schedule which also will delete the model item of course because you can't have something in this 
in the model that's not in the schedule unless you're using a filter. So that's a quick look at creating schedules in Revit.